Special lessons during her childhood and uh, teenage years and became quite good at it. Had a promising career. Uh, she had her heart set on going to Hollywood and being in the, uh, the, the many films that uh, were made that, uh, that employed the uh, employed Gantry at the time. Uh, her prospects were really rough. And then something happened. Something happened. This bright and promising girl was in a serious automobile accident. She was in the hospital for months, and the injuries to her legs ensured that she would never fulfill her dream of being a dancer. During her long homebound recuperation, to comfort herself, she began to sing. And uh, some of her friends invited her to be on a local radio show with them, and they were singing backup uh, kind of songs in the background and with advertisements. And uh, so she, uh, she sang with them. And, uh, she got interested in singing, took, took voice lessons, and her voice, her voice, uh, her pitch, very beautiful and very distinctive too. And uh, as soon as she was hired as a vocalist for a band, she was the lead, uh, the lead uh, the singer out front. And, uh, and then she found some good parts in, in movies. And her original plans was she had been dashed by accident. But that accident allowed her to find her true calling, and her true calling did emerge. She changed her name and became a recording artist and a big star in Hollywood, and we know her as Doris Day. Sometimes, when we are disappointed by life, we find that there are forces moving us this way and that and guiding us to something better. Some call this phenomenon synchronicity. Being in tune with, being meshed with, being, being part of what flows naturally out of life. To quote David Rico, synchronicity is, quote, that mysterious set of coincidental circumstances that lead us to a life fulfillment that is unguessed and unsought. In other words, he says, grace. God's grace is often at work at our, our lives. <coughs> Opening. <coughs> I like the work of the Holy Spirit to a director quietly arranging things behind the scenes in a play. We can only see what's right in front of us on the stage, but clearly there are things happening behind the scenes that change the circumstances of the play. Have you experienced God's grace in this way? We make our plans, don't we? But often, Something happens. <laughs> and the plan that we started with it has to be sort of adjusted on the way. Yesterday, Susan, Susan and I were on our way to Davis at the Casting Burgers at a graduation party. And we had uh, already been to two events that day. And it was getting late, and I was anxious to get home uh, to, to work on the sermon. And uh, I wanted to, I had my mind pressed forward just to keep going. That's my plan, just keep going. And then something happened. Something happened. Susan spotted an old-fashioned drive-up outdoor A&W diner. No, <laughs> no, exactly. What you want. And she pointed out, she pointed it out, and started telling me how much she enjoyed A and W root beer floats, <laughs> and how this was one of the bright spots of her childhood. That didn't have any bright spots, but on occasion she she find herself being taken to. A and W for a root beer float. And uh, I heard what a, a treat it was for her. How all other root beers were somehow inferior to A and W. I was feeling the pressure to press on. And yet my dear wife was almost pleading with me to turn around. And then I realized. I smiled. And I turned the car around. Getting there quick was my plan. I had to relax and do a calmer pace and a better plan. For you see, a happy wife makes a happy life. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that's the way it is with God and us. We have our plans and we press our agendas. But God sometimes is trying to get us to relax into something a little bit better, maybe something more wonderful that he might have in mind for us along the way. I'm reminded of Robert Burns' famous quote. While he's talking to a mouse, he says, 
The best laid schemes of mice and men oft go astray and leave us naught but grief and pain for promised joy. Uh, I once saw a church sign that said, uh, Man plans, God laughs. <laughs> for those of us who are by faith, one question has always come to mind is what I am planning in harmony with the will of God. And the only way you can discern the answer to that question is to pray, ask for guidance, and listen for the voice or signal, or some kind of signal of God. It's no secret. It's no secret. You, you know me. You've known me for 12 years. It's no secret that I've made some serious blunders in my personal choices for life and companions. Looking back, I see clearly that God is not in it. I wanted what I wanted, and then I made it happen. But the end results were disastrous. As they often are when we press forward with our plans, well, taking God's plans will come. On the third round, I finally prayed the prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Not my will, but thine be done. By surrendering myself to God's will, doors opened up that might not have otherwise opened. By surrendering my will to God's will, something better happened than I could have imagined. I mean, I never would have thought of a Methodist. Never. Never. My wildest dreams. And as Susan is finally pointing out to me, you, you were looking for a, a tall blonde with long hair, but short blondes with short hair are better. <laughs> <laughs> Susan is a joy for me, and a much better match for me. But I can't attribute it to anything but surrendering myself, as she did, to the will of God. I come to learn that God expects us to make our plans, to not plan as irresponsible and foolish. God expects us to think, to plan, to have good intentions in mind. God expects us to be responsible. But God also expects us to check our plans with His plan. <coughs> and how do you do that? How do you do that? I believe, I've come to believe, by humbly seeking and carefully discerning God's will, what He wants. You see, I've come to learn that God speaks to us in a variety of ways. Surely through the scripture, God speaks to us. God sometimes closes doors and opens other doors. Sometimes God speaks to us through other people who are maybe just a little bit closer to him than we are. Sometimes God leaves an impression on your heart. An impression that you can't shake. Sometimes, sometimes a God arranges the circumstances where nudges you this way or that way. Sometimes God simply whispers into your heart when you take the time to be still and to listen to that still small voice. Things do not always go according to plan. Is there anyone in here who disagree with that? Please mm -hmm. stand up and give me your reasons because my experience and most of our experience in life is that things do not always go according to plan. In fact, they often don't go according to plan. And I've learned that it's important to seek God's will. It's important to not be rigid. And I've been guilty of this in the past. It's important to adapt as you go because, because uh, well, the best laid plans of mice and men often go astray. To stick to the plan when things are fluid sometimes is the recipe for disaster. Let me give you an example. Napoleon was a great general. No one could match him on the battlefield. He would survey a battle from the high ground and he would issue orders that would turn the battle in his favor every time. He was extremely good at this. He had no fear. So why did he lose to Wellington at Waterloo? Well, he was not surveying the movements of the battle. 
He was not able to respond to the situation. He was not able to change plans quickly in a fluid situation. For you see, he had just returned from his triumph in Egypt. Did you catch that? Egypt. Now, now we're going to say this room been to Egypt. And what is every modern traveler told just before they go to Egypt? Don't drink the water. <laughs> I know one told Napoleon. That's right. At Waterloo, Napoleon had the rocks. He tried to conduct a battle of Waterloo from the water closet. <laughs> He was literally in the outhouse, out back, behind the lines, away from the action. <coughs> His aides were bringing in this, this passage, the descriptions of the battle, and he was initially ordered, but he could not see what was going on and react quickly enough. And he followed his original plan right through to defeat, because he didn't adapt. And we are like that sometimes. Stuck in a water closet. <laughs> being more committed to the plan than to winning the battle is like being stuck in the privy. That's why God expects us to be alert and aware, ever looking for what God might be trying to tell us in the circumstances we encounter when executing our plans, because our plans always, some always don't work out. Sometimes things happen and we have to make, make changes along the way. You got to be alert. You got to be there. You got to be ready. You got to be engaged. You got to be connected with God. Maybe there's a reason God is throwing obstacles in front of us. See, you got to think about that. What's happening? Maybe it means something that doors that were previously closed are not are now open and available. Do people make mistakes in their judgment and their discerning? Sure, they do. Often. And sometimes we confuse our will with God's will. Sometimes we act like this. Okay, God, here are my plans. Now your job is to bless them. <laughs> and if you don't, I'm going to curse you. And that's how we act. Sometimes we tell God what we want, but we do not spend any time or effort trying to discern what it is that God wants. Sometimes we find ourselves praying, my will be done instead of thy will be done. Even Jesus, after expressing his own will to avoid the way of the cross, yes, he did. He prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. This cup passed from me. He still surrendered to God's will and sought out the cross. Did you catch that? Even Jesus surrendered himself to the will of God. Should we not do the same? I'm as guilty as anyone. And when I preach, I'm always preaching to myself as well again. We all stand convicted. Often being more interested in what we want than what God wants. Things do not always go according to plan. We have to learn how to adapt. And we have to learn how to seek out and trust the will of God as God makes it known to us in prayer, communion, scripture, circumstances, conversations. And contemplation. You can trust the plan or you can trust the man. You can trust the plan or you can trust the man. Let's pray. Dear Lord, give us the wisdom to always seek your will and to give <coughs> priority over our own. Please stand and enjoy.